let's get into introducing our amazing guest today. Uh, instead of the normal introduction, we wanted to share this like really cool introduction that you have written for yourself on your website, which I just found really intriguing. Yeah. And Ingrid and I both loved uh, just the way it was written. And after taking your course, I feel like it really resonates. Like right. it makes sense what you're saying here. So um, you have written on your homepage, your journey begins here. This space is for you. It's for you to learn and to experience and to grow and to flourish. It's a place of expansion where we can leave behind all expectations and preconceptions where we can journey into a new dimension. I want to share with you my experience and knowledge about the human sexual experience. This knowledge is the best kept secret that humanity has. I like that part too. It has remained a secret because to comprehend it, you must experience it. To experience it, you must open your mind to a new dimension of reality. Wow. Yeah, that says a lot. Right That's there. an intro. Um, so that said, we'd love for you to introduce yourself um, and kind of share the journey that brought you to be able to write something like that, um, because it mm -hmm. is very intriguing and it definitely makes you want to know more. So welcome and we'd love to hear from you. Thank you. It's totally a pleasure and a blessing to be here with you amazing, lovely guys. And since the first time I saw you that you just came up randomly, I think through a hashtag on Instagram and I saw you too. And I was like, wow, those two are like really cool. You know, so it's so great that we've connected and that now we're doing this interview together and we're, we're having a kind of collaboration, you know? Absolutely. So, um, yeah, so I actually call myself a vitality, longe longevity, and sexuality coach because I see like our sexuality as being really, really central to also being like full of energy, full of vitality, and even living like a long and healthy life as well. And um, this is actually based in the ancient Taoist philosophy, where um, more or less like there was an understanding that our sexual and specifically orgasmic energy is the most powerful energy that we have mm. and that we can use it to literally like rejuvenate our body at the cellular level and also to rejuvenate our en endocrine system and our glands those being the um, actually when we age it's because our glands start to age and that's why some people will age more fast than others because glands are actually deteriorating. So of course, you know, between uh, every part of, uh, you know, the process of um, rejuvenating yourself with your sexual energy is every kind of like a pleasurable and a fun experience because the Tao believes that we are supposed to feel good, yeah? You know, the same way that Amen. Chris <laughs> strives to suffer, the Tao strives to just feel great and feel full of energy and feel pleasure and sees all these good feelings as being actually about um, showing that we are in balance and showing that we are healthy, essentially. I so you asked me. I just love, yeah. I just interject. One of the things that drew us to you is like, is how holistic you are. Um, it's not just, it is sacred sexuality, but it's the way that that filters out into every aspect mm -hmm. of your life. And I don't know that everybody's approaching it that way. It's kind of just kind of tunnel vision, but I love how you talk about how it touches on, on literally your whole life and can mm -hmm. enhance um, everything. And I just thought that was so powerful. I loved it. And I would say it really like having just kind of been dipping our toes into this stuff. I think that's a really accurate description of kind of like the effects that you start to feel mm -hmm. from practicing these things. And uh, we've come across other authors and things who talk a lot about that same kind of thing that like your sexual orgasmic energy is your creative energy, the very same thing. And like by, by really learning and understanding how to harness that and, and enjoy that, and even just like feeling that pleasurable state it feels good because you are in alignment with like your true self basically. And it's like, that's, that's how we're supposed to feel all the time, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? And orgasmic energy is fundamental because we're actually created out of orgasms and it's the basis of who we are, but our society takes sexual energy 
puts it in a box and sort of separates it off from the rest of us, you know, saying often it's sin that our body is some kind of a evil sort of sinful bad thing you know that that feeling pleasure is is a gonna you know you're gonna burn in hell forever because you felt pleasure or whatever yeah. you know and whereas in the Tao, the the whole concept that se sexual energy needs to be uh let's say that it needs to be sort of repressed you know or that it's sinful or that there's something wrong with it it just simply does not exist Mm -hmm. So sexual energy is seen as this rejuvenating energy and you actually practice the way sex is practiced is very, very different. So you go into sex as a kind of a meditation in a very deep, relaxed state and you feel energy, you meditate with it, you channel this energy and it's almost like going in a kind of like imagine like a rejuvenation chamber where your, your cells vibrate and your body rejuvenates. Yes. You know? and that this is basically all what the Tao practice is about. Yes. And you asked me how, how I came across it, you know, and it was completely by chance, yeah, but not by chance at the same time that I came across it. So essentially I was like, I was actually probably like about 21 when my boyfriend at the time asked me, why was I not having orgasms? And I was a little bit stumped because I thought- <laughs> so oh, you answered oh, that question. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm laughing about it now, but I think that it just shows that especially, I mean, we all have so much ignorance about our bodies, but I think especially women, because, you know, the guy looks down there and at least he sees his penis. We look down there and unless you put a mirror or a yeah, right. <laughs> you don't even yeah. really see anything, you know? And, and I don't know anything about like G spots or, you know, anything like that really and basically i um um uh i was like oh oh my god yeah and it slowly started dawning on me and it took a couple of years it slowly started dawning on me that something was really wrong something mm -hmm. was really missing and you used the word holistic and at the time i didn't think about it but i was having like loads of back pain i wasn't sleeping well i was having anxiety and i didn't put all those things together and look at them holistically i was just a bit like something's wrong with my vagina, but- Right, it was like compartmentalized <laughs> rather than- Yeah, but also this feeling that if this continued, I was gonna literally die having never experienced being a woman. You know, this was literally the feeling that I had and it was like getting more and more frustrated. I was trying to find conventional wisdom, let's say on the matter, uh, finding myself almost feeling humiliated you know, when when I was inquiring about that, that, I mean, that was a few years ago before you had the kind of so much internet information and so on. And eventually, honestly, I was in an esoteric bookshop and this was how I discovered the Grand Master, Taoist Grand Master Mantak Chia. I saw a book, I got the book, read it. I was like, that's incredible, but, you know, there's no way I can do this without a teacher. So I found a teacher, a Taoist teacher. I found a few. I started going to workshops. I started doing these exercises. I started to learn these, these exercises, which is a lot of things to do with like getting a relationship with your organs, smiling to your organs, circulating your energy, kind of Tai Chi, Qigong, and so on, you know. Mm -hmm. And then I ended up at this um, women's workshop in this little 500 year, year old ancient cottage in the sort of southwest of England and um, d doing this kind of, yeah, doing this women's workshop. And we spent a couple of days doing the things like smiling to your organs, different kinds of Qigong and meditation. And on the last day, we did this jade egg exercise, which probably a lot of people they know about a jade egg. Everyone's claiming to be teaching the jade egg, right? You know, but I think that what most people don't quite get and put across is this is not a physical exercise, it's an energetic exercise. Mm -hmm. And so, so on the last day of this retreat, we were lying down, we all had our eggs, we were underneath these blankets, we were taking the egg to the various organs, smiling to the organs, using these special sounds. And then the egg came down to my vagina, you know, and she says this thing and she goes, ask your using the word yoni, ask your yoni, what does your yoni want, you know? And I was bowled over actually, because I had never considered, you know, asking my body, let alone my vagina, what my body wanted. It was always up here. 
forcing this onto myself, pushing myself. I was very much so on pushing myself a lot. And I had viewed sex like most people do. The vagina down there is a hole for him to go in and out of. And actually the word vagina, it means a sheath for the penis. You know, right. it's not Literally even- like the resting place where it goes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which is why I got really into the word pussy because it's like, you've got this little animal down there that maybe it gets moody sometimes. It knows right, it has its own opinions. <laughs> <laughs> and, and yeah exactly so so I was just you know so I I waited and I started conversing you know with my with my pussy asking what it wanted and um eventually you know she gave the class and go inside you know and it's incredible because you do this very gentle movement bring this egg through these different actually reflexology zones inside the vagina using certain visualizations, certain sounds, which are really powerful. And you start connecting into the finding that there are these different areas with different energies, different pleasure feeling, different emotions, you know, and you start tuning in there and really like getting in touch with your body in a way that just, I mean, very, very few people will ever really actually experience this with their vaginas because like I was, you know, we're very, disconnected you know and um by the way yes as i said like you know this was all about me not having an orgasm and just you know but i think i went home especially i started using these sounds i started using these visualizations and i think that you know by the end of the week i was just my whole body was vibrating and i just had started having like multiple orgasms you know and it, it was amazing because this back pain i was getting every day was just gone you know because oh. I was almost having to lie down at some point in the afternoon because I didn't want to take painkillers then uh sleeping suddenly I mean another interesting thing was I'd been addicted to cannabis I'd given it up several times with so much willpower got back onto it you know it was just had been such a you know such a master to me such a slave master of me smoking smoking this cannabis you know really keeping me enslaved and it was out the window like it was not like I made any effort to give it up it was just gone the whole desire for it was yeah. just basically gone you know and um I was like wow what happened to me yeah <laughs> this is amazing you know and it was funny because I just got drawn into the practices and I was doing them like hours every day and it was just huge change in my life which is what I needed because I think I was kind of killing myself really yeah. you know um yeah it is it really is like so whole holistic in yeah. the ways that it filters into everything and that's something that's been fascinating to me as we're learning more and more the ways that it seems to really th these practices seem to connect the dots between so many different other sources of wisdom and mm -hmm. traditions and things that we've learned about like the energy bodies and visualization practices that amplify what you're able to do with with these practices and things we've learned from like reiki or vibration sound healing heart all these things living from your heart like yeah, it's all it's, in there it yeah. come it like all comes together in this kind of sacred sexuality material and puts it into this context of like, oh, whoa, like this is what's possible for us. And uh, so I'm, I'm really curious to know because it's, it's kind of one of those things where it's like, it feels like the more you learn, the, the more you have to learn. And uh, like, you're like, whoa, there's, there's so much here that we haven't been told. What do you think are the biggest things in the way, like a, as a pathway to people being able to connect more deeply with themselves and with their partners. Specifically sex. I mean, yeah, so if we think, you know, as Western people, you know, which is almost everybody in the world now is kind of Westernized, you know, mm -hmm. as Westernized people, we have like centuries, if not millennia of being programmed that the sexuality is dirty, that it's evil, that it's like what's coming from the devil and all kinds of like awful messages that disconnected us from our sexuality, disconnected us from our body, from our source, from our purpose. So in a sense, you know, we are, we are combating, you know, not just for example, like a modern porn industry, which is pushing people into a very like sinister experience of sexuality, but it's based on the same energy vibrations as the church telling people they were sinful. 
bring women at the stake as for being witches for having a lavender plant or an orgasm or whatever it was. You know, this is so deeply programmed into us. And there's a lot of people out there even like doing spiritual practices, doing yoga, doing meditation. But I think there's a big resistance to really face this big sexual shadow amongst Western people and especially people that get into spirituality because so many people think they need to separate their their sexuality right. from themselves in the order to be spiritual. spiritual. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. But then at the same time you get so many in particular guys out there doing meditation, doing yoga, and they still have like a porn habit essentially, or they're fighting a porn habit and they haven't broken through that connection, you know, to this, um, you know, like I see sexuality as like, it's a beautiful little child, an innocent, pure, really just lovely, lovely child, you know, but if you take that child and you scream at her and you tell her she's evil and you tell her all these bad things, that child is going to turn into a monster and a delinquent. And this is essentially what we've done to our sexuality, you know? And I think also there's an aspect because I think sexuality, not even I think it can be experienced in two ways. We can have authentic sexuality, you know, which is deep stuff, is vulnerable stuff. It's got tears involved. It's got pain involved. But this is where we find our pleasure. We also have ego-based sexuality, which is what we're shown. You know, you, you don't even need to go on Pornhub. Porn right? You can play Netflix. How you are at it. Yeah. And it's adrenalized, it's two people rushing together, having Magical. this release of energy. It's, mm -hmm. it's very ego-based, and it, it, there's a lot of it that's about dominating people and degrading people. And obviously, you know, the, the porn industry knows to tap into a certain part of the male psyche, which is very wounded, you know, even wounded from things like not being embraced enough by the mother as a child, which obviously all the child child rearing books back in the 80s and 90s were telling mothers to do, you know, and it knows how to tap into this pain in the male psyche and yeah. then show, you know, images of these nurses screaming while being gang raped by 13 different guys and so on. And it gives the guy this kind of sense of power, which he lost when he was wasn't, you know, embraced as a child, or maybe he was rejected by a woman and so on, you know, and, and also because of the upbringing that men get sort of teaching them not to show their emotions, repress your emotions, bottle it up. I mean, when you look on these massive nofap accounts on Instagram with 100,000 plus followers, and it's all based on repress your emotions, but when you repress your emotions, all you do is block your sexual energy even more. Yeah. And then you're creating a bigger and a bigger battle, you that, know. That's an interesting, I want to sort of follow up on that a little bit and dive a little bit deeper into that because as a man, it is, it's interesting and oftentimes confusing going through this pathway or this process to understanding this different side of sex and maybe like deprogramming yourself from, you know, sometimes addictions to porn or like, or you know just like there is there does seem to be a pathway at least for myself of like learning how to control your desire element of like the part of you that just wants to get to the orgasm the part of you that just feels like you need release for you know the sexual tension or whatever you have to be able to sort of tame that to reach some of these deeper meditative experiences where there's like the whole other world of pleasure and how does that balance with it? because it, it in a way it is sort of like controlling yourself and but it's also learning how to enjoy as well so it's like it's not totally hedonistic you know what I mean there is a discipline element of it I think especially for a man I would like to hear your thoughts on that okay so according to the Tao and one thing I love about the Tao is that basically our bodies are alchemical chambers okay so basically um our bodies transmute energy now if you take the symbol of the lotus you know you have the loaded beautiful lotus flower with the roots going down two miles into the mud, sucking up the mud, as they say, no mud, no lotus, you know, and it's a symbol of transformation. 
And when we look at like what exactly is that meaning? So if we, we look at the transformation processes, we look at, for example, iron ore transforming into steel, transforming then into stainless steel. And if we look at our bodies, and by the way, when I speak of things like a lower self or base uh, energies, I'm not saying in any way that the lower self is less than the higher self. In the Tao, they're utterly equal and we need them balanced, mm. the yin mm -hmm. and the yang. There's no bad and good. It is a yin and a yang, you know? Mm -hmm. But for example, look at us. We beings, we are made from DNA, okay? You know, we're this physical being and we're living in a physical world. And the, the energy that creates human and animal, even a plant, we call this jing energy. Okay, so Jing energy is what we're made out of. We can compare it to iron ore. And a manifestation of Jing is uh, the feeling of being horny, orgasm. These are included as manifestations of Jing, as well as literally the information that's stored in the DNA. Okay, mm -hmm. so um, there's certainly parallels between the, the chakra system as well, you know, mm -hmm. but we talk about three energy centers instead of seven. So if we imagine like a person living on the most base level, yeah, which would be the level of just uh, there, no energy is, is transforming, right? They're just living on the level of the jing. So that's feeling horny, needing to release and so on. Okay. Now the purpose of like a qigong or an inner alchemy practice is that we take the jing, we can say, take it from more or less the perineum and we move it up into the belly. Yeah. Okay. In the belly is an energy center that we call the Dantian. And the Dantian transforms Jing into Qi, which is the feeling mm. of vitality. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's the first, the first transformation. Okay. Yeah. Now, when this is enough Qi transformed, it's going to travel up into our heart. And in the heart, it transforms into an energy called Shen, which I think of as love, although that's oversimplifying it. I think that is love. Finally, it comes up into the brain, into the area in the middle of the brain we call the crystal palace, which houses the pineal gland, the pituitary gland, and the mm -hmm. hypothalamus. And in here, it kind of transforms into like a kind of an original Tao energy, which is like a kind of enlightenment energy, you know? So we can see how we're, we're talking about going through these steps of going from being just in the most base level of yeah. existence, coming up to feeling energized, feeling love, and finally feeling enlightened. Yeah. Right yeah. now, this is going on on so many different levels, and there's a major ac acupuncture meridian. And by the way, this is based on Chinese medicine. And if you find an acupuncturist any part of the world, it doesn't matter where, they're all working with the same energy meridian. If you Google acupuncture meridians, you find the image, you'll find a thousand images all with the same meridians. You know, this has been around for thousands of years, it's not a disputed thing. And kind of like the main meridian would go from the perineum the females through the cervix up into the heart from the men it would be from the prostate up into the heart and ideally like a perfectly health healthy balanced person which would be kind of like actually like you know these tribal people who run around naked in these tribes with <laughs> never having heard of yeah. civilization who are the most <laughs> civilized yeah. Yeah. in the world you know you would see them the energy is is just coming up uh, it's just traveling up the body. I mean, I've I've read a bit about this kind of people and some interesting observations, including they don't seem to build up muscle, but they're extremely, extremely strong. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. that's an interesting thing because they must be just channeling energy, basically, which is why they're not mm -hmm. building up all this excess kind of like muscle. But it describes these tribes where nobody's getting sexually harassed. Nobody's getting raped. Mom and dad will have sex on the floor in front of kids. There's no taboo about it, you know, because they grow up. And what happens like in a healthy person is the energy moves up into the heart and everything's balanced, right? Now with us, when we, we're growing up, we're actually often start around three or four years old being sent messages shaming our sexuality when, when kids start touching their genitals and so on, right? Yeah. Which, because the kid wants to be good, what they do, they respond to it by tensing. So they tense just mm -hmm. above the pubic and they block the energy from moving up, which this then causes- This is happening often. Yeah. This, this is, is happening childhood. everywhere in the right. Right. Yeah, everywhere in the westernized world is happening. And um, I mean, uh, it, it's, you know, it, it's the basis of patriarchal society to, um, 
to repress um, se sexual energy essentially and block us off from our power because then the energy isn't moving up and it's going to grow an increased feeling of frustration in the genitals. Obviously now we have like children even under 10 years old, apparently 10% of porn users are under 10 years old just trying to get frustration and that blocked energy yeah. out you know and even then you see them sitting in the chair at school and they're wriggling and they're told don't wriggle mm. sit still and this is all them right. trying to unblock their energy you know and then obviously the older we get the more the energy block just gets you know sunken in you know but I'll tell you like a very interesting experience I have had which is probably the closest I've been to like a civilization like this which is um visiting like eastern Ghana right where um it's one of the largest remaining so-called like matriarchal to, to this day and some very interesting thing like I remember going in a vehicle driving along a road look like dodgy looking road at the late late at night you know and just seeing women and children just walking alone down the road there's no fear for their safety there's very like you know it's very unusual for someone to get raped in fact also not just that but we were able to just leave bags like lying around with thousands of pounds worth of gear in them and nobody even touches your bags i never experienced like being looked at by someone there in any kind of way that felt perverse sexual or anything right. it was just incredibly comfortable energy i mean it is specifically actually this area is very famous as the kind of voodoo villages you know mm -hmm. but it was a very um which obviously they have a bad voodoo has a bad reputation which i basically think is based on racism you know mm -hmm. um but honestly i have to say it's like the most civilized place i i felt like but just very very safe you know mm -hmm. uh, despite the fact that where i was i was literally the only white person i wasn't you know getting stared or or, or anything like that you know and um I mean, what I learned through my own Tao practices, and obviously, you know, there's differences and similarities between male sexual energy, but I remember before having sex, you know, as a more, even though it seems like a long time ago, more out of frustration or something like that, build up energy needing to have sex. Whereas when I started doing the Tao practice and I started moving the sexual energy up, and taking the tension off, and a big part of that is actually unblocking the um the the emotions that's yeah. getting in the way because it's these emotions you know when we're shamed about feeling you know about being female about being male about having sexual envy all these little it's often very little put downs you know that, that's causing like big blockages and big traumas jade i want to jump off and, oh, that um oh, I just want to jump off of that because I think that's such a great transition to get everyone watching to understand like kind of what you teach specifically if someone's reaching out to you because something you said really hit where a lot of these repressed things grow that start in childhood become worse and worse and can create disease in the body can create that sense of shame can create um, the likelihood to have addictions like porn addiction things like that so you know, we talk about the pleasure of, of experiencing um, this Taoist, Taoist sexuality, but also sometimes it's going through pain or challenges, it's undoing those blocks. So mm -hmm. can you explain a bit how you approach that when a client comes to you, someone comes to you, what what does the work look like that you do with them? And I would um, say- When they're trying to work through those blocks. And I would say we both experienced some very emotional moments while we're going through this course and connecting on a deeper level both of us having like some big emotions come up like right. in the middle of sex it's almost like sex is sort of designed to help do that yeah and even before like it, when we because we've been interested in kind of exploring this uh, sacred sexuality for some time um, we would have moments like that where it felt like things were cleansing or clearing out or coming yeah. to the surface so that they could be released. So how do you personally approach that when you're teaching this methodology and, and this wisdom? Yeah, so we say in the Tao that sexual energy, we call it a neutral energy. So we can compare it to petrol, for example, it's a powerful neutral energy. You can of course, put the petrol in your car, drive your car, you could pour the petrol on top of your car, and set your car on fire. It's not the petrol's fault, what you decide to do with it. Mm -hmm. It's an amplifier. And the same thing is energy. It amplifies and it amplifies any emotions that are existing there, which is obviously why you would see some couples get together. We've all seen as people pull together 
get madly in love and then crazy toxic emotional stuff falling into abuse i mean in london actually the biggest reported crime to the police is actually domestic violence you know mm -hmm. because so much stuff is getting amplified and i suppose if our society is characterized by sexual repression it's certainly also characterized by emotional repression and we say these Ooh. two are very very closely connected so actually the first thing that we do in the dao practice because imagine that we have these amazing alchemical chambers in our body and we want that alchemical chambers essentially to be sort of um, uh, operating in an optimum level you know the first thing we need to do is act make sure that our body is strong enough to hold that energy because if someone is having in particular premature ejaculation porn addiction this kind of stuff their body can't actually cope with the sexual energy because it's so blocked up with emotions so i normally would spend like about a month we go into emotions but it's not anything like a psychologist because what we actually do is we start going into our body and we start finding where are these emotions storing in the body? And it's not about going into the story. We don't need to give the name to the emotion. It's just finding an energy that doesn't belong there mm. and transforming it and opening things up. And when things start to open up then, you know, after the first month or so, and it's quite amazing actually, because people sometimes report just doing a little bit of working on emotions for a few weeks, they suddenly will find things like a lifetime of porn addiction, literally just you know, out the window, for example, lost all desire, you know, first girlfriend in years and things like this, you know, that's before even looking at the sexual energy. So even just when we remove the block, it's like it's, it starts to flow in its own. But then we, we start going more deeply into the Tao practices, which is to move the energy, circulate the energy, and essentially to start to um, learn, uh, eventually what we actually learn how to do is there's you know major meridians going up the body, up the spine, up the center, up the front. And we start actually tuning into the sexual energy, actually, first of all, in the form of hormones, you know, because Jing is hormones are Jing. So for example, our breasts every month, they produce hormones, which we go through the cycle expecting a baby, but the baby doesn't happen, right? So there's all this energy being wasted, but also like a, um, you know, the, the main cancers people are getting, for example, it will be the breasts, the sexual organs. So actually to release the blocked energy, which can even turn it into tumors, we'll do things like massage the breasts, massage the testicles and start releasing that energy. And for example, bringing it to glands inside of the body and using yeah. it to rejuvenate the glands. You and know? I love how practical that is, you know, it's, yeah. I think sometimes people sense. might get intimidated, but when they hear Taoist sexuality, you know, it, it can sound so overbearing, but when you start to actually learn, one thing Hamilton and I loved about it is it was step-by-step. Step. It was so specific and so practical and so easy to apply. It's mm -hmm. more the willingness to be open to something that's a little different and yes. new, but I love that it can be something as simple as like, are you doing this massage to release, you know, so you can get the hormonal, you know, circulation going? Are you, is, are you just doing these little basic things? It seems so simple. Are you looking at what emotions might be dormant inside your body? Yeah. Um, and the fact that you can guide people to do that um, with such ease and with such knowledge that you have, we loved that. You yeah. know, it was not intimidating at all. It really does feel like more of an allowing than like a, I'm going to work hard and enforce my will to make this happen. It's like, it's much more seems to be about like surrendering and opening and allowing just this energy to do what it's supposed to do. Right. And like unlearning the habits of like, like that you, you shut off from it. Um, or over intellectualizing it even. I mean, you know, even just smiling to your heart, like you would often, you know, ask us to do in, in the course. Um, just takes you out because I think also westernized people tend to be very in their head speaking for myself I know I'm, I get so cerebral but like coming down into the heart space first and just allowing it to be an experience rather than trying to like figure it out or you know quantify it in any way and I just thought that was an awesome part of what you were teaching and it, th these are amazing experiences like I you know even before we had tried your course years ago I had had some conversations with friends about like the these breathing this energy up exercises and the ways that like men like a lot of men don't know that you can have an orgasm as a man without ejaculating and that like by breathing that energy up and like 
I experienced that one time where like I I was close to that moment and like just had that thought to like breathe it up and it felt like this like explosion in my brain you know and just all this energy like washing over me and it was this profound experience that I can't even begin to explain and kind of like you say in your intro like you you can't access it unless you experience it and then when you experience it it's like holy cow like what have I been missing kind of thing and you want to find out more you know and so uh, that's why we're just so excited to be sharing this course and be you know having you on our channel because there's so all our goal as twin soul poets is to help empower people help to show people that true love is possible and that um you can bring this energy into your life and like it's worth it you know like it's worth the the scariness that it takes to expose your heart and open to love because we have you're opening to all these really profound experiences and you know like you said i think a lot of the western world that has really uh sort of robbed people of this in the ways that children are being educated about sex and the ways that we're shamed through religious ideals and things it's like i think there's a lot of intentional disempowerment going on there and you know and people are more and more becoming interested in this kind of thing because i think there is a sort of awakening going on where people are just sort of naturally realizing like something is missing something's missing here, especially sexually and with this uh, emotionally and all those things. Um, so we're, we're living in an interesting time now because I think there's a lot of that sort of awareness breaking through. People are through. sensing that. And so like how Jade can, like, I guess you can answer this for men and women because I think a lot of people are sensing something is missing, but they don't know what it is. Like how can these practices like bring greater pleasure and healing for women and for men. Cause I think that was a big part of with this course, which focused on men, the course that we're gonna talk about briefly um, in a minute here. Um, how can a, a woman or a man start to experience more pleasure um, and healing in their sexual practices? Yeah, I mean, so the Tao is all about, it's about pleasure, but it's also about fun because there's something about you know, when you're a Tao practitioner, you're trying to kind of eternally stay young, you know, and part of that is keeping like a kind of childlike sense of fun and adventure in your life, as well as doing things like massaging your breast to send the energy to your, you know, thymus gland to rejuvenate your body at the cellular level and so on. You know, we, it's a very, we very much believe that, you know, we're, we're striving towards the fun and the pleasure, you know, in the very stark contrast to what our culture has been a, about for centuries, you know? So, um, so ultimately what the Tao does is it brings us into our bodies, you know? So unlike most religions, which take us outside the body to worship a, a deity out, or deities that are outside of the body, we actually look inside and in the Tao we say the universe, and we do talk about the universe and the violet light of the universe connecting with that energy and bring it in the body. But we also believe the entire universe is inside us within our bodies and on a quantum physics level there's actually some accuracy of this interesting wow. enough as well you know yeah and um so and and we believe that the, the sexuality is is central to this and what we do is we tap into the energy field and the energy level and we start healing our body on the, the energy level which we can say is like the quantum level you know, so when we start doing these exercises like smiling to our hearts or smiling to the liver and saying shh or circulating the energy, massaging the breasts and so on, we're actually hacking the energy field, essentially, you know, mm -hmm. and th those those parts and i suppose if you look at both science and religion they don't like energy right they don't like esoteric things they don't like you know all this stuff which is a bit witchy and they don't quite understand it but this is our reality you know things like emotions are energy you know sexual feelings they are energy and these are all the parts of ourselves we've got completely disconnected from you know that it's almost like this space 
between the, the atomic particles inside of our bodies. So by connecting in there and by balancing this whole energy field, we find a healing and a wholeness on like such a deep level where things we may have like really struggled with, you know, specifically things relating to emotions, things relating to sexuality, but also just health in general. Mm. When these, and we start freeing up these energy blocks and getting the, the techniques to be able to continuously every day, keep cleaning out our energy field, mm. you know, it's like on, on such a deep level, we find ourselves healing and whole, you know, just the yeah. things that were just completely, you know, messing us up. And there's even stories of people learning the most simple Tao exercises and healing from, you know, uh, incurable cancer that was supposed to yeah. be killing them in six months, you know, and so on by just simply smiling through their organs, yeah. you know? So it's, it's so really- profound, man. It's so profound. It, it, it's so profound. And this is, again, like what I was saying about how you start, opening these doors and it starts connecting the dots between all these different things like even what you're saying about this energy field that is connects the whole universe but also exists in its entirety within us and with each particle of matter and like like you said quantum physics is very much like proving this with like mathematics and experiments they're doing with the cern particle accelerator and things they're like they're figuring out this stuff and being like yeah actually all these things that, you know, ancient traditions, the Egyptians talking about the net that connects all life, like all these people who were like, we're living in a matrix and it's like a, it, it's all related. And you start to, what is interesting about these Taoist practices that you're teaching is like, that is your key to viscerally experiencing these teachings in a way that like, you know, it goes beyond just intellectual knowledge to like a integrated embodied experience of, you know, the secrets of the universe, I guess <laughs> is kind of what it feels like. But um, so I want to, I want to get into talking about this course that we've been mentioning a little bit. And this is what Inger and I just recently finished the from lover to super lover course. And uh, Ingrid mentioned this, this course is specifically geared towards men in general, but, you know, for someone who would want to click the link below and sign up for what we're talking about, like, how, how can they benefit from it? And, you know, can anyone do this course? So, um, well, um, anybody can do it, but I suppose one has to be in the place in oneself where you're ready to, you know, open your mind and start exploring things. But I think that for anyone who's looking to get more out of their sexuality, to get a deeper experience with their own body, to start to understand energy and in a sense on the most tangible level, you know, and I think that one of the things that inspired me to create it was actually coming to realize that, um, you know, the fact that we have this sexual energy and this pleasure is almost like proof that there is some divine hand in our creation because mm. it's a perfect way not just to feel great not just to feel uh, pleasure but actually to experience enlightenment and experience very very deep levels of connection with ourselves and connection with our partner and all that exists within the universe so yeah. it's certainly going to work for people that are looking to understand themselves more and to have a deeper experience with their sexuality yeah, yeah. and i just want to throw in that i did do the course alongside hamilton if you didn't see our last video where we kind of introduced the course um it was highly beneficial to me now i know you're going to have some offerings specifically geared for women or maybe for couples, or maybe just for anyone who wants to expand their sexuality, because you know people identify in different ways. But I think anyone can benefit from knowing how to move their energy and work with the energy in their bodies. Um, but for me, as a woman doing it with Hamilton, it was very empowering and healing to me to hear you um, kind of validate and echo things I've been feeling internally that I hadn't had validated before. Um, that a lot of women are having these experiences of wanting to kind of get into the deeper um, 
even just communication with their partners about what they're feeling or feeling like they're worthy of having the time taken that, it, that a woman often needs to get to those deeper levels of experience. And to, so to hear you say that and to share those kind of things in the course was amazing for me. And it, even just the simple practices of smiling to your heart, smiling to different areas of your body helped me be more receptive to the things that you were teaching him to do. And I'm still working on that, it's a, it's a process, but I definitely recommend if anyone is, you know, has a partner, you know, a, a male partner who would be interested mm -hmm. in it, consider doing it with them, you know, if they're open to that, because I think it, it really helped us face a lot of the blocks and things that came up, but also like get deeper into the experience of pleasure and, and fun of it as well. Yeah, and I will say as a man, like be prepared to understand that like it's, it's called from lover to super lover, but what is a bit surprising about it, I found is that uh, one of them, to me, like probably the most profound learning experience came from having all these ways that my approach or mindset or like belief systems were, were wrapped up in egoic kind of sex of like, you know, the course is not about how to just make your woman have a bunch of orgasms and, and you just like become great at sex and all this stuff. Like it's so much of the beginning practice, like you're saying, is learning how to just love yourself and open to the energy of love and be able to receive that and then to be a sort of like a vessel for offering it. And that is a totally different vibe then like okay I'm about to turn you out <laughs> you know like I'm about to do you know it's not about a performancey thing it's about I'm just here but and I'm it it works it's like it's like which the, is ironically like the makes, irony <laughs> is the fact that it's not based in trying to get somewhere is what I feel really opens up that really deep connection and pleasurable experience and also it yeah. is very like step by step it's very specific and i will add in here that there are videos you know included in this course that will actually show you how to do these processes so just you know know that yeah. that's there you know they're that they're very tastefully done very well done but that's what you're so you can actually see what you're doing so you actually yeah. can understand how the processes work but like they do work yeah. and we've already really enjoyed exploring it and we're just like hamilton said the tip of the iceberg yeah and I, I really did have like a pretty emotionally raw, like couple of weeks just starting it out of like going through the week one, learning to smile tomorrow and heart, learning to just feel the energy in my body and just be present with it without being in a, in a rush to get somewhere without, and like letting it travel to these different energy centers. And like, I really had some periods of almost like mourning like mm. this sense of loss of like, man, I, I have not been allowing this for myself. And that's really sad. Or like, I haven't been taught this. And like, it really did feel like this release of this sense of sadness of been like, man, I, I didn't realize how much pain this caused by missing this kind of thing. And allowing myself to feel that sadness and then release it and then you know now opening and being like okay this is okay I can now give myself permission to feel these things that I've been told are bad or you know evil or whatever and like let it in you know and it really is about that's what's that's sort of what I was alluding to earlier is like there is a bit of discipline like I think no fap communities and things are on to something in a way that there there is something empowering about a man learning to like not need to ejaculate every day and be able to go extended periods of time without ejaculation out of this sense of if it's coming from a sense of I just need to release I just need like an anxiousness you know kind of compulsion and that can be difficult, that process, I speak from my own experience. It takes dedication and real mindfulness to get over um, if that's become like a habitual kind of thing, which I think is, in my opinion, probably pretty common in today's world. But it's, 
it's that process is much more about uh, rather than pushing urges down. I think it's much more powerful to embrace that energy, learn how to integrate it. And like you were talking about, there's specific ancient exercises about bringing that energy up, bringing it in rather than pushing it down. And that it can be a game changer. Totally. And the thing is, when you bring it up, where's it coming up to? It's coming up to your heart. Yeah. And when that sexual energy comes up into your heart and combines with the love in your heart, it's like it amplifies that love. So naturally, when, when we want the sexual energy flowing up, because when we push it down, we're actually disconnecting the heart and the sexual energy. And that's why you find, unfortunately, on so many of those nofap uh groups you know in instagram and so on that you're finding like a lot of them they're talking about treating women in manipulating women and treating them in degrading ways and they're very afraid of love because what they're doing is they're pushing the energy down but when you have this healthy connection between your heart lots of love and actually if you imagine the orgasmic energy coming up is blue the love energy in the heart is is red and when the two combine they actually turn into this purple energy which sort of resonates with the violet light of the universe and spreads through our bodies and sort of heals our body at the cellular level and just what was coming up to me when you were talking just then was um one of the really powerful things about both tantric sex and this Taoist stuff and is this is a bit of a combination of tantra and Tao, actually you know but it's the fact it is so slow and you can even do it without without moving. Yeah. But what you're doing is instead of going fast, banging backwards and forwards, and what you're doing, adrenalized sex, fear-based sex, because adrenaline is fear. And this is running away from emotions, running away from vulnerability and so on. You yeah. know, you go into this vulnerable space and yet it's normal what you're feeling. I mean, one of my clients who's like been doing so much exercises, you know, really like started having his first full body orgasms and huge emotional release crying everything like this he's just like wow my whole world has just completely changed and it's normal to go you know when we go yeah. through these mega awakening there's it needs to clear out and of course some people aren't going to experience that it's not necessarily that everyone's going to have you know lots of tears and so on but it's just uh stuff needs to come out stuff needs to clear and i do think one of the things how we said about sexual energy bringing up these emotions and when we do the slow sex the emotions come up but the beautiful thing about it and this is how therapeutic tantric massage actually works is that when the the we're feeling the sexual energy it rises up it amplifies this emotions it creates the perfect state but where with our beloved we can actually process these emotions we can process process them through breathing through talking through movement through dance you know, through love making but we can get them to the body if we have these techniques like for example the first technique you learned hamilton was to breathe because breathing is how we get stuff out of the body as is movement as is sound as well you know and when we start and and through for example the techniques you learned which come from Taoist massage and yoni massage to start mm -hmm. releasing different energy blockages inside of the woman's vagina you know and just these techniques i mean i absolutely my my life plan is to get this stuff taught in school to kids because yeah. come on you see so many men complaining about women women are complaining all the time they're miserable they're this they're that guys if you were just massaging their vaginas in the right way you find you're having a very very different experience with her because this stuff and you see it going on in tantric massage this you know with clients and this stuff is incredible and you can literally give someone like years of therapy by mm -hmm. massaging their genitals in certain ways Women can do it to their male partners. Males can do it to their female partners. Obviously, gay people, transgender people can all do this together. You know, uh, it's it's not sort of stuck for for only heterosexuals. Although obviously yeah. this course is is geared towards heterosexuals right. um, specifically, but um, it's something can that any part. Can really and I think that's so. Happen. I love that because, and I know we're 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 getting close to our time here, so we could. There's so much to talk about in this, and I think we'll definitely have to like have another interview because if you would love to, if you'd like to join us because i think people would love to hear more about this i would um yeah. it's so fascinating um and just having the like even when you talk about educating 
young kids, you know, into a healthy form of sexuality because right now their education is usually porn and very lacking school system, you know, teaching sex ed and that's it. Right. Um, and everything else is like, figure it out for yourself. So I think what you're doing is really important. Um, I think it's powerful. I think a lot of people are starting to become more interested in this. And um, so if we can play a small part in, in getting a new perspective or not a new perspective, but a revisited perspective um, of some ancient wisdom that's now coming to the fore again, like I feel so honored to do that. Yeah. Um, I just want to ask how people can get in touch with you and also like what upcoming things you have, what coming upcoming offerings um, you'll have like on your website and, and um, you know, where people can follow you on Instagram and all that good stuff. And of course we did mention before you answer that in more detail, we did mention we will have the link below to this from lover to super lover course um, in the video description, where you can just click that link and get One access of the best to this amazing course. You can make, truly, I can't if recommend you're it enough. To expand your your um, sense yeah. of self love and you know um, love with your partner. Yeah. Yeah. So I have indeed the um, the lover to super lover course for men. I'm just in the process of finishing creating a kind of. It's not going to be called lover to super lover. The name is still. I haven't yet decided it on, but it's the equivalent for, for ladies, for women, where we can learn to start using these tantric techniques with our partner. For example, maybe we learn, they haven't learned, or maybe we want to just give them a great experience so we can start learning how to use tantric foreplay, linear massage, different kinds of like sexual techniques. As well as that, I have some longer programs and actually I'm coming up soon, starting like, um, two groups, a group for men, a group for women, going through these um, these practices. This is actually a three month long program where we go through all the Tao practices, starting from the emotional practices through to the sexual practices, wow. the personal sexual practices, and then learning how to use them in sexuality with, with another person, essentially. So, so for somebody who really wants to deep dive into this and really, because what came to me, it's like almost like more of a lifestyle than just learning a practice. It's a it way really of living. Is. Um, now, so if someone's really interested in diving deep, this would be um, something for them to yeah. sign up for was this three month. And that was something course. I realized too, even just right getting started, like you mentioned, learning how to breathe was one of the first things you learn in this course. And I started immediately started being able to apply that in my day to day life where like so many times throughout the day, I would like check in with myself and be like, oh my God, like I'm not really breathing, like, and having that real breath, like down into the belly and being able to just take a few moments to do that and realize, whoa, like how much just that op starts to open up your energy and just becoming mindful of just these little things, like, like the breath from moment to moment. It's, it, this, this goes so beyond the, your experience in the bedroom and your experience with your sexual partner, like it, it really sort of becomes everything. Um, it's powerful. Absolutely. It really is. And then what I didn't want people to miss also, what are the social media places people can connect with you as well? Okay. Well, my brand is called the art of the bed chamber. So you can find a Facebook group. You can find a Facebook page. You can find the Instagram. You can find the YouTube, all called The Art of the Bed Chamber, as well as the website, The Art of the Bed Chamber. And as well as that, I do uh, weekly masterclasses, which you can, okay. for example, if you sign up to my, uh, my email list, which is on my website, The Art of the Bed Chamber, um, you, you get a free, uh, I think, a genital reflexology worksheet when you when you sign up there as well. So if you get onto the email list, you're going to be updated about my weekly classes, plus about different um, offerings and, and programs that I've put on. Beautiful. Awesome. Jay, this has been so awesome. Like, yeah. I, I'm just so grateful that, like, you know, I, I really don't believe in, like, just happenstance or just quit. Like, I think you were meant to reach out <clears> to us, whatever thing you know brought you to our page like I'm, I'm so grateful because we've started this awesome conversation we've benefited greatly from the things you're teaching you and it was so in alignment with so many of the things we've learned we've talked about things like Kareza or David Data or a teacher so it just was it was in perfect alignment with the things that we were already wanting to bring into our relationship and our you know union together and now to be able to share it with other people and say like wow this is really helping us this amazing person has come in 
to our um, life and is sharing this great wisdom. Like I'm, I'm just really grateful. Yes, likewise. Yeah, and my blessing to have met you guys because I think what I liked when I first saw you was just feeling you guys are so authentic, you know, and there's so many people talking about stuff, teaching stuff, but actually finding people where you just feel authentic, you know, and honestly, this is what I love about the dad. I met so many authentic people, people in their 60s, 70s, and 80s that you would hardly think were more than kids, you know, but also what I noticed about you know, the Tao as well is like, okay, you know, we're all imperfect. We all got our weird things, our bits of ourselves we need to change. But when people start doing the Tao practices, it's like this scientific thing that things start to change, you know, and it just ends up that, you know, we end up just as like really surrounded by this really bunch of really nice, really cool people that are actually looking inside themselves, working on their shadows, working on mm -hmm. their emotions and just balancing themselves. And they're just the most comfortable, lovely people just to be around. Thank you. Thank we you. really appreciate you saying that. And that's, you know, for folks that sign up for our love coaching, like we never present ourselves through what we do as experts on anything, but we're coming from our own experience of how, you know, we've moved through some of these things. And, and we like to be open to sharing our obstacles and our challenges and things, as well as, you know, powerful things that um, we're learning or like beautiful experiences we're having, because I think it's all hand in hand. And, you know, I, I, we really value authenticity um, as something that, you know. Right, and it's clear that really like you, you walk your talk and you're, you know, you are, you are exemplifying what you're teaching and that you, uh, it seems like you're always continuing to learn and expand on that. So I just wanna thank you again for taking this time. If anybody watching has a question for Jade, um, feel free, you can put it in the comments below. We can either get an answer from Jade or Jade, even if you want to answer on YouTube um, directly their questions, that would be awesome. Um, and if you would love to um, see another interview with Jade, please tell us what you'd like us to talk about. If there was a portion of this interview that you found was fascinating or you wanted to know more about it, just let us know and maybe we can get that um, arranged sooner than later. Yeah, yeah, round two, I'd love to do it. It feels like, you know, just like when we talked uh, a while ago, it's like we could talk about this stuff all day, man. There's just so much to, to discuss. Um, because it just connects to so many things but this yeah. has been well, amazing we will, we will definitely come back like thank you so much jade for taking the time to do this with us mm -hmm. my pleasure to be here absolutely any final any final words or quotes or anything you want to go out on <laughs> no just it's been a pleasure to speak to you guys it's just yeah you're great guys it's wonderful so thank you so much thank you awesome. jade all right guys we'll see you all next time um and have an awesome awesome day